So we did analog write in the last tutorial and now we're going to be doing analog reads. So, so far in the Arduino tutorials we've been dealing with the digital pins over here. In the last tutorial we did analog writes which used the, the pulse width modulation which we see over here on these ports is marked with the squiggly line on pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11. Now we're doing analog reads so we're moving over here to the analog in port of the Arduino which is these six pins here which are marked from A0 to A5 as you can see here. Now for all analog reads we have to use these pins here. So why would we use the analog read over the digital read? Well digital read can only have two values it's either on or it's off so that's great for a simple component like a button but if we want any complicated or varied signals coming in then analog read is much better because it gives us a, a much wider range of values to test for. So for example, if it was a, a light sensor or a distance sensor, uh, a microphone, a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, anything like that, that isn't just on or off, you'd use the analog port. So for example, you're not going to ask someone what's the temperature, they're not going to say all oh, the temperatures on, all oh, the temperatures off, they're going to say oh, it's 20 degrees. So that's the sort of thing we're going to use the analog port for. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using an infrared sensor to take an analog value from. So this is the infrared sensor. I'm not going to teach you guys how to wire these up. They're not that complicated. Normally it's just a five volt line, a ground and an analog in pin. Um, if you want to know how to wire your own IR sensor up, there's loads of different kinds. Just look on the data sheet. Um, but in this video, it's the theory that matters, not necessarily the wiring of the component. The basic theory of an IR sensor is that there's an emitter bulb and a receiver bulb. As you change the distance you are away from the IR sensor, it changes the amount of infrared light reflected from the emitter back to the receiver, which then in turn changes the voltage given out on the voltage outline, which on this circuit is the green line. So now let's look at how it's wired up. So we have our 5 volt and our ground line here, We're running to 5 volts and ground on our Arduino. If we look over here, we can see there's the 5 volts. There's the ground, and we have our signal pin, which is the green one here, wired to the, the analog in port, pin A0. We can see that there. So now we've wired up our infrared sensor, we're going to code it up. So we start by saying int, and we're going to call it IR equals, and then normally if we were setting up a digital pin, we'd just write the pin number, say digital pin 5. But when we're wiring things up to the analog port, we have to write A before the number because it's a different port. So by writing A, we're telling it we're writing or, or talking about one of the analog pins. So I've wired it to pin A0. Then we've, in the void setup, we set up with pin mode exactly how we would with any other normal pin. So we say pin mode, uh, and it's an input because we're reading from it. And then also, I'm going to use the serial monitor to print the value of the IR sensor. So we're going to set up the serial monitor as well, which I showed you how to do in the last tutorial. And we're going to do a board rate of 9,600. If you don't understand that, then look at my last tutorial. Um, then we're going to do... I'll show you how to set up an analog read, and then we will actually print that analog read. So if you're going to do an analog read, you just write analog read with a capital R and then you brackets and then say what you're analog reading. So in this case we're analog reading the IR sensor. So if you just wanted to do an analog read that's what you'd write. Now that returns a value between 0 and 1023 and the reason it's 1023 is that is a 10-bit binary number. So if you take 10 bits in binary and they were all ones, and you added up the value of all of them, it would equal 1,023. So, we can now do a serial print of that. So all we'd have to do is say serial.print, and then we're going to say ln, because we want to print each number on a new line, brackets, and then I'm just going to copy this 
into the brackets because we want that to be part of the serial print. And then we're going to close the serial print, semicolon to end the line of code. And then we're going to add a delay just so it doesn't print really quickly. Say 200, uh, no, let's say 50 milliseconds. And now we're going to upload that to our board. and open our serial monitor. And there we see the values of the IR sensor printing every 50 milliseconds. So now I'll switch to my normal camera and we can see how distance away from the IR sensor affects this value. So we're looking at our IR sensor over here and this is the serial print of the values we're getting out. And as we can see, as I move my hand closer to the IR sensor, it's starting at about 800, 900. As I move my hand closer, it's dropping to 700 and to 600. It's 400, 200, 100. And as I move away, it's going to go up again. So I'm going to quickly take that principle and show you guys something useful you can do with it. So if we delete all of our code and start afresh, so you can get some practice in, I'm going to start by setting up the infrared sensor again. So we're going to say int ir equals, and then remember we wired it to pin A0. Uh, and then we're going to say int led equals. Uh, we're going to wire it to pin 13. Then we're going to go to the pin modes in the void setup, pin mode IR sensor. And remember that's an input because we're reading from it. Pin mode LED. And that's an output, remember, because we're writing to it. And that's our setups done. So now we're going to move to the void loop. And we're going to use an if statement. And we can say if the analog read of the infrared sensor. And then remember when we were using if statements with digital reads, we'd say equals equals high or equals equals low. Because the IR value that we're getting could be anywhere between 0 and 1023, instead of writing high or low here, we write a number, say 500. And then instead of saying equals equals, because the analog read value, the chance of it being exactly equal to 500 is very low. So instead of saying equal to 500, we usually say the analog read of the infrared sensor is less than or equal to 500 or whatever value you want to set it as or more than and equal to 500. So um, we're going to say if it's uh, if the analog read value is less than or equal to 500 then we want to do something and what we're going to say for it to do is to turn on the LED so we're going to say digital write LED high and then we're going to add an else statement to turn it off otherwise. And we're going to upload that. So I've got my LED hooked up to ground and pin 13 over there. So if pin 13 is working as our 5 volt line when we digital write it high. And our infrared sensor is coded to turn on the LED attached to pin 13 when we come within a certain distance of it. So in other words, when the analog read value goes below 700. So let's see if we can get that to work. So as I move my hand closer, as I get within a certain distance, the LED turns on. If I move my hand away, it turns off again. On, off. So we can use this theory with a number of analog sensors. In the context of a vending machine, we could use the infrared sensor to turn on an LCD screen only when someone walks close enough.